welcome everyone to another IoT Central workshop. Please send any question that you might have directly in the chat. We will make sure to follow up directly to you by email after this session. My name is Louis, Louis Moreau. I'm a DevRel engineer with Edge Impulse. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform object detection using Edge Impulse. We are going to go through the entire ML pipeline from the data collection to labeling your data, extracting meaningful features so the neural network can learn, train your neural network using transfer learning techniques, validate your model, and then run the inference on live devices. As object detection is pretty greedy in terms of resources, I'm going to show you how to use Linux-based devices, whether it's a Raspberry Pi, a Jetson Nano, your MacBook or a Linux computer, it should work. Note that we have recently released another object detection model that is more suited for constraint devices. It's called FOMO, Faster Objects, More Objects. It will be the topic in, of another video. What is Edge Impulse? Edge Impulse is the world's leading embedded machine learning platform. It helps you to build full end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline to accomplish variety of ML tasks from regression to vibration and sound classification through object detection and predictive maintenance. You can import data from any sensor and deploy your model to almost any device. You maintain the full control of the data and the firmware at all time. Edgeable Studio is the online platform that handles everything, including the co collecting the data from your embedded sensors, labeling the data, performing any pre-processing calculation, and training your uh, machine learning models. This end-to-end -end pipeline is called an impulse. You can then test your impulse on live data with connected sensors. After, the studio will guide you through the pre-process of creating pre-compiled firmware on a different number of platforms. This includes all your blocks, whether they are pre-processing code, train a neural network, any anomaly detection that you might have, so you can perform your inference locally without having the need of an internet connection. This being said, let's get started and let's start a new Edge Impulse project. If you do not have an account on Edge Impulse, please create one. It only takes one second. Once you've created your account, you should arrive on your project dashboard. You can change an, your, the name of your project here. In, the, in my case, the name is Object Detection Fork versus Knife versus, versus Spoon. You can change your project name. You will probably see a wizard um, asking you which kind of data are you trying to collect. Just click on images and then multiple images in the frame. This will set the labeling methods uh, to bounding box instead of one label per data item. Once you've done that, you can click on devices and you can connect a new device. You can use your mobile phone. It will display a QR code. Just flash it with your phone. and click on Collect Images. Get started, navigate to the Data Acquisition tab. You will see in my project, I already have several data collected, but for, the, for this tutorial, I will just collect some new data. Let me try here to collect one fork and one spoon. Here we are. One spoon and one knife. Here we are. Let me try to put the three of them together. Here we are. Now, once you've collected enough data, so you can see in my, in my project, I've got 85, 84 items in the training data and in the test data, I've only got 23 of them. So I've got a split of 82% of my data, which are based in my training data set and 18 in my test data set. This is, usually we try to keep something like 80, 20. So it's, it's not a big deal. One, so how you can reshuffle your samples, you can just click here and perform tests, train test split, or you can directly select some of the data and then move them to the other 
test set or training set. Once you've collected enough sample, you can move to the labeling queue. We have several options for you to label your data. Either you can do it manually. So here, for example, this is my fork. Okay, and this is my spoon. Spoon, All right? This is good. I can save the labels. Here it, it will try to track the data in between the frames. In my case, it's not really suitable, so it does not work much. So I will try to use the classify using YOLO v5. If your objects are common enough, there is a lot of chance that they are already present in the YOLO v5 a model. So here I've got a knife and a spoon. It has been automatically, automatically detected. I can click on save the labels. And there is another option. If you have already a model trained in your project, you can directly use that project or use your model to keep labeling your data with your own inference. So here the fork is good. The spoon is not great. This is probably because I don't have a lot of data when I train my model and then I can just select here and put my knife. This is okay. I can save the label. And I do not have any more items to label in my labeling queue. Then what I can do is to navigate to the create impulse tab. The create impulse is basically your machine learning pipeline. In our case, we are going to use 320 by 320 images. Uh, why? Because we are using transfer learning after that. And I will explain that more into details later. I'm going to choose an image processing block. You can choose several others depending on the on the kind of information you're trying to classify. For example, if you're trying to classify audio, you'd rather use uh, audio MFCC, MFE, or a spectrogram. If you're classifying movements from accelerometer, you can use spectral analysis. You can just use raw data if it's more suitable for you. And then here it's the object detection model that we are uh, using. It's going to output three different features, fork, knife, or spoon. You can save your impulse. And then you can navigate to your image tab. I'm going to select RGB again, because it's a requirement um, at the moment for the transfer learning model that we are going to use after. I can go to generate, I can save the parameters and generate the features. Afterward, the feature explorer will load. This will plot all the data in your data sets because images have a lot of dimensions here. 320 by 320 by 3 RGB, uh, red, green, blue, is equal to approximately 300,000 images. And we run in the background a process called dimensionality reduction on the data set before visualizing it. Here, the 300,000 features are compressed down to just three. It's then clustered based on similarity. Even though we have little data, we, you can already see that the clusters are forming. Here, for example, here, it's a bit more mixed in between. This does not really matter. We are going to see how our model performs. You can then click on object detection. And here we are going to use the MobileNet V2 SSD FPN lights. So with all the data pre-processed, it's time to start training the neural network. Neural network are a set of algorithms modeled loosely after the human brain that are designed to recognize patterns. The networks that we are going to train here, I will take the image as an input and will output three classes, whether it's a spoon, fork, or a knife. Or a knife. It's very hard to build a good working computer vision model from scratch, as you need a lot of images. So what we are using here, it's a technique called transfer learning. So to configure that, just set this model. We have other model called FOMO. I already spoke about that just before. But this one, the particular MobileNet V2 SSD FPN, basically what it will take, it will take a pre-trained model get rid of the latest layers and then retrain the very last latest layers with your own data. You can click on start training and then it will uh, take uh, several minutes to train. 
Feel free to increase a bit the number of training cycles. If you see that your model does not converge, lower a bit the learning rate. If you see that you're overfitting, if you don't are comfortable with those terms, leave just the default values and then you can ask questions on the forum. We will be happy to guide you or to share with you some articles explaining those. Here, my precision is not great. Obviously, I don't have a lot of information. I don't have a lot of data in my training set. It does not really matter. What I will test is then the accuracy across the testing set. So I already tested it. It's not great either. Here, for example, we've got a bad precision. Here, for example, it has not recognized anything. Let me, for example, check this one, show classification. This one was all right. Probably the bonding box are not exactly across your objects as you would have expected. So here, for example, I'm missing one fork here, uh, one uh, spoon here below. Again, as you bring more data in your machine learning pipeline and you train again, your model will get better performances. Now, what I'm going to show you, it's how to run the inference using one of the tools that we have called Edge Impulse Linux CLI. Let me zoom in a bit. I'm going to do Edge Impulse Linux Runner. I'm going to clean so that I can select my project, put my nickname, my password. Oh, make a mistake. And I'm going to select my project. So which camera will I use? I'm going to use uh, this one, which is an external camera. It's probably going to be easier. And it will provide me a nice URL so that I can directly test here. And I'm going to check the voice here with a fork. Grab that camera. Am I able to recognize that fork? Maybe the other way. So, fork. Okay. I detected some knives at some time. Let me try to approach a spoon. What if I'm approaching knife as well? So here it has troubles to do that. Okay, great. Yeah, as you can see, some of the labels, some of, some of the class are, uh, have troubles to be detected. This does not really matter. What, I'm, uh, what I wanted to show you in today's video was how to create your own machine learning model to detect objects. Let me go back here. As you can see again here, the inference time is pretty fast. Uh, this is because I'm running that on my MacBook Pro. If I want, to have an estimation of the inference time based, for example, on a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 4, I can go back to my dashboard and select the Raspberry Pi 4, go back here, and the latency calculation will be automatically provided. As you can see, it's pretty high, uh, again, because this kind of model is pretty greedy in terms of resources. Same, the flash usage is pretty high. That's why we recommend it to use, to use it on Linux based devices. Feel free to version your project, uh, create a public version of what you've created, share all of that with us on the forum. We will be happy to reshare that on social medias, etc. We have other options. If you want, for example, to integrate your model directly with a C plus library, you can go to the deployment tab and download a C plus library. Yeah, that's it for me for today. Thanks a lot for watching. It's been a pleasure to guide you through this object detection process. And again, I want to thank uh, IoT Central for hosting this workshop. Again, feel free to ask any question if you have. Uh, we'll come back to you after. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.